Welcome back, healing family, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Teresa. I'm a licensed mental health therapist, a registered yoga teacher, and I specialize in helping people heal chronic pain and chronic illness by regulating their nervous system and retraining their brain to form new neural pathways and utilize neuroplasticity to think more positive thoughts and engage in new behaviors that are more healing. So today we're going to do some sample brain retraining practice rounds that I have created to focus more in on understanding the science of brain retraining in the context of a guided meditation or visualization. So it's gonna be short and sweet. Whenever you're ready, we can join together and we're gonna start with the first round, which is understanding the amygdala and the threat response. So when we're ready, we're gonna close our eyes and we're gonna take a few deep breaths. And we're gonna begin by imagining a calm, safe, peaceful forest. You're gonna feel that cool breeze on your skin. Hear the leaves and the wind and the birds singing. You're gonna visualize your amygdala, this almond-shaped structure deep in your brain. This is your brain's alarm system and it's always on the lookout for threats. You're going to visualize this as a warning system, a fire alarm, or a blinking light trying to warn us when something's going wrong. But if we're stuck in chronic illness or pain response, this has been stuck on in alarm mode for a very long time. We want to visualize it calming down. So as you breathe deeply, you're going to signal to your amygdala that you are safe and imagine that this alarm system is shifting to maybe a soft, soothing light, or you're turning the sound down, or you're hitting a reset button on that alarm system, we're recognizing that the amygdala plays an important role in assessing threat, but it doesn't have to get stuck in alarm mode all the time. Maybe we can picture a situation that triggered us recently, and you're going to visualize how your amygdala detected that threat and responded. Maybe that was well-deserved or maybe it was an overreaction. Let's picture a situation where your amygdala definitely overreacted. Picture that little almond-shaped part of our brain overreacting, the alarm bells are going off or the light is blinking red. But imagine that the amygdala takes a moment, reassesses after a few moments, and calmly assesses that it's a false alarm and resets itself. The light is no longer blinking red, maybe it's a nice soft green, or the sound turns back off. We go back to default mode and feel that sense of peace as it sends the message to your body. The message may be, my amygdala is a powerful protector and I thank it for keeping me safe when it needs to and turning off when I am safe. I trust my body and my mind to keep me calm and secure. I am safe in this moment and my brain can distinguish between real and perceived threats. We're gonna move on to round two, which is balancing our HPA access. This time I want you to visualize a bright sunny day. You feel energized and happy and your body's in balance and harmony. You have enough activation to enjoy yourself, but you're calm enough to just be in the moment. Visualize your hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenal glands all working together. This is the HPA access, all the parts of your brain and hormones that regulate throughout your body. When we picture a stressful event, I want you to kind of imagine that that access between all of those different parts of your brain and glands are responding. The hypothalamus sends a signal to the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland signals the adrenals to release adrenaline and cortisol. But then I want you to picture that the threat is now gone and the whole system slows down. Everything regulates and normalizes, all of our hormone and neurotransmitter levels calm down, the cortisol lowers. Feel that calm as your body returns to balance. And I want you to visualize that this HPA access that might have been stuck in hyperdrive for so long is now learning to regulate, learning when it's okay to shift back down to a space of safety. Maybe we 
we say to ourselves, my HPA access is in perfect balance, and it responds to stress with grace and ease. I trust my body and my brain to manage stressors effectively and return to a state of calm quickly. Every breath I take brings balance and harmony to my brain. We're gonna shift to strengthening our hippocampus. I want you to imagine a beautiful garden that you've tended and every plant represents a memory. This is our hippocampus. We're going to visualize that there's a stream of beautiful clear water flowing through that garden and it nourishes each plant. And this stream represents our focus and attention, where our thoughts go. And we're gonna picture that these plants grow strong and healthy as that stream flows and each plant becomes more vibrant and represents a strong memory. And you're gonna watch that garden expand with more beautiful plants as your hippocampus becomes more nourished. And I want you to think back to maybe a time where you were stressed or triggered or trauma occurred. And maybe we have an analogy here that during those times, either that stream was dammed off or was polluted and how that impacted the way we stored our memories or the types of plants that grew or whatever feels right for you as we go along with picturing our hippocampus and our mind as a garden. And I want you to say to yourself, my memories are clear, and vibrant, and I choose which ones to focus my nurturing and energy on. I nourish my brain with positive thoughts and clear focus, and my mind is a beautiful garden that grows healthier every day. Now let's work on our limbic system. We're gonna remember that with closing our eyes and taking a few breaths, we can feel a warmth and a light surrounding us. Visualize your brain, visualize all of the neurons and networks that have to come together to form the deep structures of our brain. And picture these glowing lights as they flash and alert signals to each other. Imagine the limbic system, the way that our nerves that go through our whole body connect with our brain and signal either safety or pain or good feelings or danger and see it as a tool that helps us navigate the world and helps us process emotions and memories and connecting all parts of our brain and body in harmony when we are in a good space. This is why it's so important to understand that we aren't trying to turn the limbic system off, we are regulating it. We need a strong limbic system to respond to threat appropriately and to thank it for being able to protect us but that part of a healthy limbic system is knowing when to stand down and working maybe with first responders or military um, or envisioning that, um, you could think of a tactical team that's ready to go in when a situation is tense and as soon as they get that order to stand down, they are able to walk away and kind of take away that armor and maybe that's a visualization that feels comfortable or we might think of um, maybe one of our pets like if you've ever had a dog that is so sweet and loving and awesome and fun to be around but if it ever hurt someone at the door it could go into that mode really quickly of protection and oh, what's the threat assess it neutralize the threat and then as soon as you say it's okay it's okay it's just the mailman or whatever the dog trusts you enough to come over and sit down and go right back to normal that's how we need to work on talking to and visualizing our nervous system, our limbic system, so that we don't start to visualize it in just one way. We understand that it needs to be able to ebb and flow to keep us safe. And maybe repeating these affirmations. My limbic system supports me in processing emotions with ease and grace. I trust my brain to integrate my experiences and emotions with harmony. I am in tune with my emotions and my limbic system is my biggest ally. And we also want to begin to include polyvagal theory as we are healing. And this is our ability to not just be either in fight or flight or rest and digest mode, sympathetic or parasympathetic, but to have that middle ground where we can have social engagement. We are activated just enough to be able to be socialized and 
motivated, but we're calm enough that we can enjoy things and feel a sense of ease. So we want to visualize a safe place, a sanctuary where you feel very secure, maybe your favorite room or a beach or a forest. And you're going to visualize your vagus nerve, this beautiful nerve that innervates from our brain, through our throat, down to our bellies and our gut. And this is the main messenger for our parasympathetic nervous system. And you're going to imagine it glowing with this soothing, vibrating light, and it calms your entire body. And you feel a sense of safety and relaxation spreading through you. Maybe on our out breath, we hum. Mm. Maybe we sing a song that feels good to us. Activating through our throat, singing, humming, yelling, not yelling, that's not something we want to engage in all the time, but whatever we need to do to activate that nerve in a calm and peaceful way, deep breaths, that is going to help that nerve to be active, but not too active. We want to tone that nerve. So that's why in yoga, bee's breath, it's a combination of deep breathing with a humming noise is a really powerful tool for our vagus nerve. We're also going to bring in the social aspect of polyvagal theory by picturing ourselves interacting with a loved one, a pet, a sense of community, and feeling totally safe and socially connected. And this is that sense of safety and being social at the same time, being active and being calm at the same time. And we're gonna to affirm to ourselves: my vagus nerve supports my body my regulation, and my sense of calm. I am connected to others in a safe and nurturing way. My body knows how to return to a state of calm and safety. So this is something that we can integrate. Brain retraining can be very simple. We want to combine the science and the visualization, time in nature, nourishing foods, healthy social interactions, Maybe we have a simple morning routine, just five or 10 minutes, visualizing different parts of your brain, working in harmony, healing, glowing, and growing. Maybe we just focus on one area each day as we're getting used to it. We can have an affirmation practice that we go through throughout the day. Write down the informations that resonate with you or write down your own and repeat them throughout the day, especially when you're stressed. Maybe write them on sticky notes around your house or put them on your phone as a reminder. And then in the evening before bed, review your day, visualize how your brain responded to stress. And if there were times that there was some extra stress, maybe re-visualize how we can talk to our brain about what to do differently next time. We can visualize setting that reset button to calm everything down from the day and reaffirm your brain and your nervous system's ability to regulate, heal, and support you. A few more affirmations to close out. My brain and body work together in harmony. I am capable of managing stressful situations with comfort and ease. Every day, my brain becomes stronger and more balanced and my limbic system reaches a state of healing. By integrating these tools, these visualizations and affirmations in your daily routine, you are already harnessing the power of your natural healing and neuroplasticity and this is the basics of brain retraining. I hope this helps you guys today. If you have any questions, please comment below. I also have a link to my limbic system healing course and community in the description below. And please subscribe and like this video. It helps to grow my channel and help more people have access to these free tools that I provide. Have an amazing day full of healing and I'll talk to you all soon.